Good afternoon everybody, my name is Duncan White, I'm here at Intersect 2023 and delighted to be speaking with Jason Trainer, General Manager at MSA Safety. Good afternoon Jason. Hey Duncan, how are you? I'm very well and uh, it's only a few hours that we were speaking before so uh, if you see another video out there with uh, Jason and I then uh, we promise that we're going to talk about something different. One of the big issues that uh, we're seeing in the in the fire world at the moment is the ability to um, extrapolate data to ensure that we are maintaining firefighter safety. MSA have always been at the forefront of firefighter safety and we're going to look now at uh, MSA's um, products that they put to market, the Lunar and the ability to look at data. Jason, could you tell us a little bit more about those? Please? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, we have a, a unique opportunity with our system of products to be able to, to capture a lot of information, information about the environment that a uh, individual firefighter faced, uh, the product that they were wearing, while they were wearing it, how they um, experienced the product, whether it's a breathing apparatus, a fire helmet, even fire protective clothing. Um, but when you talk about Lunar in, in particular, Lunar provides now a gateway for us to get that data uh, into the cloud and uh, aggregate that data over time. So what that means is we have an opportunity to, to dive into the information that was previously lost, that may have been you know, experienced on scene, but not, uh, not collected. And we look forward to the ability to then use that information to better inform product development, to think about what's the actual environment that, um, that this is being used in, how is it used over time, and uh, can we then build things like algorithms for preventative maintenance so, so we're able to predict when uh, a component should be replaced rather than waiting for uh, a daily check or, or the other normal procedures. So we're, we're now in a position, and, and I look back to uh, when I was wearing breathing apparatus as a firefighter where the checks would be done on a daily or twice daily basis. The, the firefighter will be required to enter information into a paper system. So we're now looking at um, data capture that straight away allows a firefighter to scan an individual tally that will straight away save all that information to the cloud? Yeah, absolutely. And so we're looking to to take what was paper logs and, and really, you know, great record keeping, but some tedious work and, uh, and digitize it, not only for the ease of use for the end user, uh, but to inform, you know, a fire and rescue service about their fleet of product. And, and maybe some fire stations are very busy, some are less busy. Uh, there's an ability to extend the life of product by rotating it through uh, through the broader fire and rescue service. So if you're moving an SCBA from one station to to another because it's less busy, um, so there are thoughtful ways that we're looking to build um, information into the into the product and uh, and have that then just have a better customer experience with regard to uh, the product over time, the fleet of product that they manage. When we think about data, we really think about three specific areas. So there's the people, um, so the individual who, who was wearing the breathing apparatus, when were they wearing it. Uh, there's the product, so you have a fleet of really uh, valuable assets that you want to be able to, to effectively manage over time and maintain and make sure they're in, in peak condition. And then there are the processes and, and things like on-scene incident command, uh, telemetry, which has been around for quite a long time for, for air management, and we've now been able to take that and in, in, introduce things like remote incident command where uh, you may be able to see a, a mosaic of multiple incidents at the same time, but then drill down to a level of detail that you would have historically only had on scene. So is there the ability for a, the control room or a remote commander um, in a location far away from the incident to see and get an information and a good overview of what's going on? Yeah, absolutely. So that's the beauty of of cloud computing and you know we, we work with Amazon Web Services and, and that information going up into the cloud can then be brought back down uh, really anywhere in the world with, uh, with a smart device, with a laptop to be able to better understand what's happening concurrently in an individual uh, municipality or, or city and, uh, and then diving in for more detail or pulling back up to a 100,000 foot view of uh, the multiple things that could be happening at the same time. So in terms of, of uh, well, firefighter welfare, we look at uh, the issues of exposure to hot environments. Does the system have a temperature measurement that allows the um, firefighter commander to see the level of punishment that the firefighter has taken? 
Yeah, so we're able to understand the environment that, the, for example, a breathing apparatus is being used in, uh, and not only temperature, but duration. So along that curve of um, how long have I been exposed and, and to what temperatures were, was an individual product exposed to. Um, and we think, you know, over time and in the future, there's opportunity to better understand the individual and, and how that individual reacts to um, changes in those environments, things like core body temperature and other really meaningful physiological indicators that uh, just require time and, and longevity of data and using the product in training and, and then applying that information to, uh, to live events. We see a big potential for that. So as, uh, as we see regularly from MSA, firefighter safety still remains the priority with the, with the new systems and the new telemetry coming on board. My final question, going back to the old systems of um, automatic distress signal units, I understand that the, the system built in now is revolutionary in relation to sending messages back to the control board, to the operator, so that in the event of a firefighter becoming in distress, the signal to send help is a lot quicker than it always used to be. It is, it is um, speed and efficiency is, is critical, as you know, in, in these operations. So when we think about the ability to communicate two ways with, uh, with the ECB or Entry Control Board, um, with your control module and the electronics that you have, that message and communication is, is important. And, and another opportunity is reducing voice chatter and, and some of the distractions that comes with that. Uh, communications is, a, is another critical area for us that we, we continue to, to work to innovate in. The C1 has been re very well received on the, uh, on the M1 product and, uh, and we look for some more exciting, uh, exciting launches in the communication space that are coming. Lunar, you know, we talked about a, a little bit earlier and when a lunar goes into alarm it becomes a beacon and that beacon can then attract uh, information from other users that are uh, that are using Lunar. So if I come to a T in the road and I swing left and it's a very low percentage of signal and I swing right and it's a high percentage, I know with objective information now that I'm taking that first step with confidence and, uh, and the speed of rescue is gonna be more efficient and better informed if you have real data versus um, you know, really making an educated guess. So um, whenever Jason Trainer smiles and says there's a new product coming, we know we've got something to look forward to down the line in 2023. Um, as we've come to expect, MSA puts firefighter safety at the heart of everything it does. What we've heard about today not only looks at making the role safer, but also looks at firefighter welfare. I'm Duncan White and I've had the pleasure today to talk to Jason Trainer from MSA Safety. Thanks Jason. Thank you. Take care.